error of metabolism disease that we will be talking about today is called medium chain ACL-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency, also known as MCADD. Some background on the metabolic defect include that it is a disorder of fatty acid beta oxidation. People with MCADD have problems breaking down fat into energy for the body. MCAD deficiency is, is inherited in an autosomal recessive manner and can affect both male, males and females equally. MCADD occurs when an enzyme called medium chain acyl-CoA dehydrogenase is either missing or not working properly. This enzyme's job is to break down certain fats in the food we eat into energy. It also breaks down fat already stored in the body. So without this enzyme, in a state of starvation, when glucose and glycogen stores are used up, there is an inability to perform fatty acid oxidation, resulting in the reduction of acetyl-CoA and oxaloacetate, which are two molecules that are involved in gluconeogenesis. Without gluconeogenesis, no glucose is made, resulting in dangerously low blood sugar. Everyone has a pair of genes that make the MCAD enzyme, in children with MCADD, neither of these genes work correctly. These children inherit one non-working gene for the condition from each parent. Some clinical implications and manifestations include premature death or serious disability, which occurs in 20 to 25 percent of children with the disorder if left untreated. If left untreated, it can also lead to permanent brain damage and intellectual disability. It can also call, cause breathing problems. Now Amber is going to tell you about prevalence of the disease and signs and symptoms. As Jenna mentioned, this is an autosomal recessive genetic disorder. It is the most common inherited disorder of metabolism, and it affects um, mostly Northern European people of Northern European descent. In the United States, the average incident of this disorder happens in one to fifteen to twenty thousand. Um, the majority of the symptomatic cases present in children uh, from ages uh, three months to about three, um, three years of age. Um, the first signs of MCAD disorder include um, sleeping longer and feeling more lethargic, um, being tired, behavioral changes, um, irritable mood, poor appetite, fever, diarrhea, low blood sugar, which is also known as hypoglycemia, and vomiting. Long periods of not eating, infection, and illness can trigger these signs and symptoms in these children. Um, this disease is diagnosed by a specialized test called aminosynthesis, and it's when you take fluid around um, the fetus, and it could reveal a dramatically reduced activity of medium-chained acetyl-CoA um, dehydrogenase enzyme. Um, another test that can diagnose this disease is known as acetyl carnitine profile testing, and that's when they take blood from the children and um, they use these samples to detect acetyl carnitine, which is a substance that builds up in individuals with fatty oxidation disorders such as MCAD disorder. The earlier this diagnosis is made, the lower the chances of an infant with MCAD deficiency will exhibit um, developmental disabilities. Hey everyone, I'm Amanda Anahosa and I'll be talking about the medical nutrition therapy that goes along with the MCADD. So as mentioned by Jenna and Amber, this disease is due to the lack of enzyme medium chain acetyl-CoA dehydrogenase, which results in an inability for beta oxidation to take place. Because of this, patients need to be sure that they avoid medium chain fats. Parents who have infants with this disease need to be careful because some infant formulas have medium chain triglycerides as their primary source of fat, so you need to be sure to read labels. Because of this disease's impact on gluconeogenesis, it's important to increase simple carbohydrate consumption. Patients should be given simple carbohydrates by mouth, such as glucose tablets or sweetened beverages, to reverse catabolism and sustain anabolism. Infants and young children with MCADD need to eat frequently to prevent hypoglycemia or a metabolic crisis. So it's often suggested that infants are fed every three to four hours. Babies between the ages of six months and one year should not exceed eight hours without feeding. And babies one to two years should not exceed 10 hours without feeding. 
But of course, this is a patient by patient basis and some babies need to eat more frequently than others do. For young children that cannot exceed eight hours without feedings, it's important that they be fed during the night. Some babies may need to be woken up to eat if they do not wake up on their own. Before bedtime, some infants can be given two grams per kilogram of uncooked cornstarch to ensure sufficient glucose levels overnight. It's not the best tasting bedtime snack, but it's better than hyperglycemia. Many teens and adults with MCADD can go without food for up to 12 hours without any problems. Most children do not have a metabolic crisis past the age of 10. So a supplementation that is sometimes given is L-creatinine. And this is a natural substance that's found in muscle cells. It helps the body to make energy from fat and fat stored in the body. It also helps to get rid of waste that's made during the breakdown of fat. I'm Lacey and I'm going to be talking about the nutritional monitoring observation and follow-up. So parents should be keeping a food diary for their children which will include how often they are fed as well as how often that carbohydrates are being distributed to them as well as what type of carbohydrates whether it's a glucose tablet or sweetened or non-diet beverages. So parents should be able to be keeping track of hypoglycemic events that occur throughout the week. They should be keeping track of them. So progress will be indicated if patient is having no symptoms of hypoglycemia throughout the week after the nutritional modifications have been implemented by the RD. Fat intake will also be logged in the diary to show to RD at biweekly visits. This will indicate if baby is being compliant with the diet, um, so that's whether or not he or she is able to tolerate the low fat and high carbohydrate diet. So parents should be watching very closely for any signs of developmental defects, such as breathing problems and, dizzy and dizziness that will indicate if the treatment is working properly. Special attention should be given to clinical symptoms of decreased oral intake, vomiting, diarrhea, fever, and alertness level. L-carnitine is going to be given to help the baby to help the baby's body make more energy from the food and fat stored in the body. If treatment by food and L-carnitine is not working, however, then surgery may be necessary. Progress is indicated if the baby is able to keep down the supplement of L-carnitine and tolerate it being given to them. If child is unable to tolerate the oral sugar-containing fluids or the glucose tablets, then intravenous fluid therapy should be given promptly even if the labs are normal. If patient becomes furtherly ill, then prompt administration of glucose is mandatory.